Last lesson we showed how a change in a non-price determinant of demand for candy, the example we used was a decrease in the price of ice cream or an increase in the price of ice cream, could cause a shift in the demand curve and a change in the A variable in a demand equation. Remember that a change in the A variable causes a shift inward or outward of the demand curve, but no change in the curve's slope. What I want to talk about now is a change in a variable, a non-price determinant of demand, that could affect the slope of the demand curve and change the B variable, which you will recall represents the inverse of the slope or the change in quantity divided by the change in price. So let's do one more scenario here before we wrap up this big lesson on linear demand equations. Let's assume that consumers' incomes rise. That's our I in TOAS. Let's say that incomes increase. Now the assumption I want to make here is that higher incomes mean that consumers of ice cream become less responsive to a change in the price of ice cream. However, the autonomous level of demand or the Q intercept does not change. So let's say the higher incomes means less responsive consumers. How would this affect demand, the demand curve and the demand equation for candy? So let's assume that the Q intercept or the A variable in our demand equation remains the same at 600. In other words, our demand curve is not going to shift in or out, but what's going to change is the B variable causing the demand curve to pivot. And we'll show how that's gonna look in just a minute. What I wanna do is say that at a price of 50 cents, instead of consumers demanding only 500 units of candy, they're now going to demand 550 units of candy. And what we'll see is that the amount by which the quantity demanded decreases falls at a slower rate now that consumers' incomes are higher. So notice that what's actually changing here is the B variable in demand. To find our new B variable, we have to do the method that I taught you in the first lesson in this series, which required us finding the change in quantity and dividing it by the change in price. So let's see what we've got now. I'm gonna choose two quantities. We'll do Q1 and Q2, and we'll use the prices that go with that. We have P1 and P2. So we are now gonna have Q2 minus Q1, that's 450 minus 500, divided by $1.50 minus $1. Let's simplify that. We've got negative 50 over 0.5, we can now find our B variable. Let's do that on our calculator. It's got 50, we'll make that negative, divided by 0 0.5. Oh, that was a mistake there, 0 0.5. And we get a B variable of negative 100. That can now be plugged into our demand equation. We've replaced this. We've got a new demand equation of QD equals 600 minus 100 P. How is this going to affect our demand curve? Well, notice that the Q intercept of 600 has not changed. So our demand curve is still going to start here at 600. What has changed, however, is the slope of the demand curve itself. Now, for every $1 increase in price, quantity demanded is only going to fall by 100 units instead of 200 units as we saw before. So we are now going to see that as the price increases by $1, we'll go from 0 to 1 up here, 0 to 1 on our vertical axis, the quantity demanded is only going to fall by 100. So that puts a point right here on our graph. Another $1 increase in price, quantity demanded only falls by 100. And the reason I know that is that our B variable, B equals run over rise, or change in Q over change in P. So every time I'm going up by $1, I've got the change in P. I'm going down by 100, which is our change in Q. So we get a negative 100 B variable, giving us a new demand curve that looks like this. With the same Q intercept of 600 as our original demand curve. But what has happened is that demand has increased and became steeper. So let's go down here and interpret this. If the B variable decreases, demand has increased and 
become steeper, which means consumers are less responsive, are less responsive to price changes. That is what happens when the B variable changes. What if incomes had fallen? Let's do one more scenario here just to show what happens if consumers become more responsive to price changes. If incomes fall, incomes decrease, consumers who already demand ice cream will demand less ice cream and they'll become more responsive to price changes. More responsive to price changes. Without creating a whole new demand schedule, let's do one scenario in which the demand decreases, but the Q-intercept stays the same. So what if we have a new demand equation of QD equals 600 minus 300 times the price? All right, let's illustrate that and we'll show quickly how that would affect the demand curve. Now, instead of quantity demanded falling by 200 units, quantity demanded is going to fall by 300 units. So that would lead to a shift in the demand curve. Now I've got minus 300 for every $1 increase in price. So our change in P and our change in Q, we get negative 300 is the change in Q over the change in P. We're going to do that one more time. If the price goes up by 1, we're going to see quantity fall by 300. And that actually puts us at our P intercept there. So with the B variable of negative 300 instead of negative 200, we end up with the new demand curve to the left of our original demand curve that has pivoted along the Q intercept of 600. So the conclusion here, if we go down here, we see that if the B variable, let's scroll down a little bit, if the B variable increases, demand has decreased because consumers are more responsive to price changes. So what does this do to the demand curve? It pivots the demand to the left and reduces the slope. The demand curve actually becomes flatter when the B variable increases. And again, that is because the responsiveness of consumers to price changes is increasing when the B variable increases. Throughout the lessons on our linear demand equations, we have shown how to calculate the demand equation using data from a demand schedule or a demand curve. We've talked about what a movement along the demand curve looks like and how we can calculate the quantity demanded at any price, not just those that are on our table or easily seen from the graph, but any price in between those on the schedule as well. Next, we talked about how a change in demand caused by a change in a non-price determinant of demand. The example we used was a change in the price of a substitute good, ice cream, will cause a will cause a change in the A variable in our demand equation and shift a demand curve inwards or outwards, causing the Q intercept to increase or decrease. Finally, in this lesson, we talked about how a change in a non-price determinant of demand, specifically the incomes of consumers, could change the responsiveness of consumers to price changes and cause a pivot of the demand curve along its Q intercept, increasing or decreasing the responsiveness of consumers to price changes. Here we go.